the basics of event contracts, prediction markets, and binary options. So at this point, you should be seeing uh, that. All right, perfect. All right, so we are all good. Let's get into it. Now, before this is something you're going to see at the beginning of every presentation uh, at this entire day, as well as each one of the sessions, are sponsored by the Nadex Compliance Department. Trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for everyone. Any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. And the entire day, as well as a session, it's an educational session. Please do not construe anything we say as buy or sell recommendations. We're doing this for your education purposes. And that will become abundantly more clear when I do some off-roading and I do some demonstrations of the platform or some of the other folks jump into, because I'm sure Tom will do this as well. He's probably going to get into a little bit of timely market commentary, as well as a Mark Petrino, the head market technician from uh, Benzinga, when he's talking about technical analysis, remember, these are not trading rec recommendations. We're doing this for your education purposes. So uh, just a little bit about me, because I am going to be your host for the day. If you've never joined any of Nadex sessions before, I'm just going to do this very briefly. I did join Nadex in 2019. Uh, I have an extensive career in the financial services industry. I started off at Anderson Consulting, but then came out, I, I traded on the floors of Chicago uh, exchanges, mostly on the Chicago Board of the Chicago Board Options Exchange. And then I went to work for the exchanges themselves, Deutsche Börse, Eurex, which is a very large global exchange out of Frankfurt, Germany, uh, Boston Options Exchange, which we rebranded re as Box, the New York Stock Exchange, and then I moved into the brokerage space, E-Trade, and now I'm over here at Nadex, and our world at Nadex is getting really interesting, as if you hadn't seen the news, uh, IG Group, who owns Nadex, has uh, entered in an, into an agreement to sell Nadex to Crypto.com, and we are very much looking forward to that, so uh, that is going to take a little bit of time, but that's going to be some exciting times for Nadex. I did go to school out in California at UCLA for both my undergraduate and my graduate. Now, what are we gonna talk about in this session? And I am going to do a quick intro of Nadex. For a lot of people who've never come to Nadex before, you're here because you wanna talk about day trading and retail products. So I am gonna to, going to do a brief introduction of Nadex. Then I'm gonna talk about these contracts, event contracts, prediction markets, binary options. And we're gonna, going to get a, a definition of what they are and how they work and how you can trade them. And that closing a position piece is really important. Then we're gonna talk about how they, the price of these things move around. And then I am going to do a practical demonstration. So first up, who is Nadex? You're all here and you're going at a lot of, and we've got so many new people coming into our markets particularly retail traders looking for short-term uh, trading opportunity, particularly with all the volatility in the markets with contracts designed for retail traders. And that's what Nadex is. So we do have uh, our name, North American Derivatives Exchange. It is an acronym. Uh, Nadex is an acronym like everything else. We love our acronyms in the financial services industry. Nadex is simply short for North American Derivatives Exchange. But what is important is we are a proper regulated exchange in the United States. We are regulated by the CFTC, another acronym, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. The reason that's important is if you were to go and look at binary options on the internet, if you were to Google binary options, you might see there are a variety of nefarious actors in the industry globally. It's unfortunate. Uh, it really is unfortunate. However, Nadex, all those problems that you hear about where people can't get their money out of their account or they have some crazy experience, uh, that none of that's true of Nadex. None of it because we are a proper regulated exchange in the United States. Uh, we, we report into a regulator. We have to adhere to all the rules, laws, regulations of the United States. We get audited. Uh, none of that nefarious behavior goes on. We are a true exchange in the United States, and we are regulated. So a lot of that nefarious behavior that you hear about that simply doesn't apply. In fact, all that nefarious behavior that you hear about doesn't apply to Nadex. It's unfortunate though, is that we do get tainted with some actors in offshore exchanges. And the only thing I would say, if you wanted to go to one of those offshore binary option providers is caveat emptor, buyer beware. If you needed some type of recourse or something were to go wrong, 
you would simply have no place to go. We are regulated and that's important and you do have recourse if you felt something was, was not fair. Now, why was NADEX created? And it was, does we, the exchange itself exists to create products for individual retail traders. And that is who almost all the participants in our mar marketplace are. Now you say, what does it mean to be an individual retail trader? What are they looking for? Well, one, it's a very, very low cost to entry. You do not need thousands of dollars to trade at Nadex. You can do so with tens of dollars, even you know hundreds of dollars, tens of dollars. Uh, that's one. And number two, every contract, it doesn't matter what you trade at Nadex, everything has got very clearly defined risk. So you know what you're getting into. So I wanted to go through that because it's important to understand that we've got contracts that are designed for retail traders. Let's get into the trading opportunities. So let's define event contracts, prediction markets, and binary options, and how you can use those for trading opportunity for short-term trading. So what is an event contract, a prediction market, a binary option? Well, one, it's a short-term contract, right? People looking for short-term uh, risk-reward contracts with defined risk. Now, in the end, all of these contracts, event contracts, prediction markets, binary options, in the end, only one of two outcomes can be true, okay? So in the end, either the event occurs or it doesn't, or in the end, the prediction is true or it's not. With binary options, it's in the nature, binary options. And this is why they're all sort of lumped together. They're called binary options because in the end, only one of two outcomes can come true. So when you talk about event contracts, it really is more defining the type of product that underlies the contract. Event contracts generally come around economic reports. For instance, we've got CPI, uh, you know, the consumer price index, the government is going to release that this Friday. There is an opportunity for you to say, will the consumer price index be great? Uh, will it have increased by 0.5%, 0.6%? Uh, you can make a prediction in the market and either the the event comes true it's either greater than 0.6% increase or it's not that's why it's also a prediction market sometimes in prediction markets though it might be more around news events for instance how many americans will be vaccinated at the end of this month will more than 1.8 million americans be vaccinated fully vaccinated by the end of the month it's a prediction market. And in the end, it's either your prediction is true. You either say the event is going to happen, it's going to be greater than a 0.5% a increase, or it's not. In binary options, there are contracts that revolve around economic, uh, they're around things that happen in, in the trading industry. Uh, the equity indices, it could be foreign exchange, it could be commodities. So for instance, will, uh, Gold finish higher than $1,800 an ounce at the end of today or in the next two hours? Will the uh, S&P 500 be above a certain price in a certain period of time? So what's really interesting around event contracts, prediction markets, and binary options, well, one, at Nadex, you can either buy them or sell them. All right, you actually have a choice. You can either buy the binary option, you can, buy the, you can make a prediction, you can buy the contract. In an event contract, you can buy it or you can sell it. That is something that makes Nadex a little different. I will talk about that, but no matter what, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're buying or selling, in event contracts, prediction markets, binary options, your risk and reward are known up front, so there are no surprises. So in the end, all of these contracts are essentially the same thing. It's simply nomenclature. It, and it's kind of interesting that someone out there might say, I don't like binary options. I heard they're risky, but I really like event contracts. I think they're cool markets. And what's interesting is they're the same thing. There's no difference. Or I really love these prediction markets, uh, and, and but I don't like binary options, but they're the same thing. They are going to behave the same way. The pricing around them is going to be the same. So let's try to understand what these contracts are. And as I mentioned, they're all the same. They're a statement. They're a prediction, right? And that prediction, that statement is made up of three components, a market, a condition, and a time. Now, for argument's sake, I am simply going to use 
for right now, crude oil. We can pick the crude oil market. Will oil, and then there's going to be a condition. Will oil be greater than $71 a barrel? And then there's an expiration time in the next hour, in the next two hours, by the end of the day, by the end of the week. So you've got a statement, a prediction, and you can trade based on your opinion on what's going to happen in the oil market or what's going to happen with an event or what's going to happen with a prediction market. And these products will trade between zero and 100. All right, now we're going to talk about what that zero and 100 represents. Because when you're trading a binary option, it's a little confusing. What does the price of a binary option actually represent? Well, one, in all of these cases, as you can see, it's a true or false prediction. Either the event happens or the event doesn't happen. And the event that it does happen, and it's true, will oil be greater than $71 a barrel at the end of the day? If it's true, the option will go to 100 in the end. And if it's false in the end, the option will go to zero. It's binary in nature. Now, what does that price actually represent? And what you can think of the price of a binary option representing is the probability of the event occurring as determined by the marketplace at that exact time, at that point in time. So for instance, let's just kind of think about that for a second. Will gold be greater than $17.90 an ounce at the end of the day? Now, if gold were currently trading $17.90 an ounce right now, and you had a binary option that said, will it be greater than $17.90 at the end of the day? Well, by the time the end of the day comes around, there's an equal chance that it could go up to 100 and be true, as there is that it would be false and it would go to zero. So you would expect the binary option to be trading somewhere around 50, a 50% 50 probability that it will be true. Now you can buy that binary option if you think it's going to be true and it would go to a, and you're looking for it to go to 100 but if you think it's going to be false you could sell that binary option and look for it to go to zero. So what you're really trading is the probability of the event being true at that moment in time. Now if you take a look at that if you look at a and here's actually a, a market on, and it doesn't matter what this is a market on, but this is me trying to buy a, a binary option or a prediction market or an event contract. But if I see a price, 46 and a quarter bid at 49 and a quarter, if I take a look at the exact midpoint, the midpoint is a 47.75%. The market is predicting that whatever this is at this moment in time, there's a 47.75% chance of it being true at the end of the day or at the end of the time period. Now, that also means there's a 52.25% chance that it's going to be false and I can either buy it or I can sell it. And I buy it if I think it's going to be true and I sell it if, it's going, if I think it's going to be false. Now, here's an example of me predicting something is going to be false. Uh, here's a market where it's 50 and a half uh, bid at 54. If I look right in the middle, right in the middle there, it's 52.25%. Now, if I were buying the one on the right, the market would be telling there's a 52.25% chance at that point in time that it will go to 100. But if I sell it, if I sell it, it's 100 minus that 52.25. And so if I were to sell this, there's a 47.75% chance that it's going to go to zero. So that is what you're trading. You're trading the probability of the event being true, and you can buy it or you can sell it. So that's what that number represents. Now at Nadex, that number represents something else as well. And this is where we're going to get into the risk reward of binary options. While they trade between zero and 100, and we know that that's the probability of the event being true or not, right now, all of our contracts also have a notional value of $100. So that also turns in to the actual dollar amount that you're risking or uh, as, as your potential risk, as well as your potential reward. So now you don't have to be able to do this math. 
we do it for you on the order ticket. If we were to ever change the value of our contract size, which we may do, uh, the dollar values will change, but we calculate that for you. But let's just kind of think about that. What is your cost of doing a trade? And if and your cost is the collateral that you put up. And the collateral that you put up is the maximum amount that you could potentially lose on the trade. So if I bought a binary option at, say, 30, there's a 30% chance that it's going to go to 100 and finish at 100 at that moment in time. It's also going to cost me $30 because I paid 30 for it and it could potentially go to zero. Now, if I sold one at 30, Right, I sold one at 30. Well, it could potentially go to 100. So I have to take 100 minus the 30. I'm going to have to put up $70 because if I sell it at 30 and it goes to 100, I could potentially lose $70. That's what I'll put up. Now, why would someone sell one at 30? Well, because I think it's going to be false. There's a 70% chance that it's going to go to zero. And there's a 70% chance that they would, you know, it would go to zero and they could collect the full $30. So everyone in the marketplace gets to buy or sell, there's no restrictions on who can buy and who can sell. You can, and it's a central limit order book. Anyone can put a bid or an offer wherever they want within the, within the contract. And you know if you're buying exactly what you could potentially make and what you're risking. And if you're selling, you know exactly what you could potentially make and what you're risking. Oh, and uh, you know, now I do the math on the other side. If you're buying, your maximum reward is it goes up to 100. If I bought one at 30, I could potentially make 70. So I'm risking 30 to potentially make 70. It's a pretty good return on your money, uh, depending upon the time frame of the contract. All right, and uh, and the, and the uh, inverse is true if you sell. Now, I did want to go through an order ticket because all of that math is done for you. In fact, we do a little bit more for you on the order ticket if you're going to access these markets. One, here's an example of the S&P 500. Will the S&P 500 finish higher than 4659.6 at 4.15 p.m.? Now, we can see a current indicative price. We can see that the indicative price, it's right, pretty much right there. It's slightly below uh, where, where we're looking at, but there's a bias to the upside with the market rising. We know that there's 22 hours and seven minutes to go in this contract. So I know that this contract is going to settle in a day. Uh, we know what the terms of the contract, will it finish higher? And then there's a market. I can either buy it or I can sell it. Now I did mention that if I wanted to buy it right now, I can see that there's 200 of these offered at 53 and a quarter. I could pay 53 and a quarter, but if I don't want to pay 53 and a quarter, maybe I'm only willing to pay 52.75. I can place an order between the bid ask spread. We have a central limit order book. Now, will I necessarily buy one at 52.75? No, someone would have to want to sell it to me, but I can certainly put a bid there and advertise my price and someone else has the ability to see my price and potentially interact with me and sell it to me. I could even off, I could sell one. I could offer one between the bid ask spread. So while you've got a bid ask up there, we do have an open order book. Anyone can place orders in the book. You can place a bid between the bid ask spread or below. You can place an offer between that bid ask spread or above. Now, if you wanted to risk more money, I mean, right now I'm, I'm doing an example on a one lot. You can always up your size. If you're willing to risk more, you can do two or three, or you can scale in or out of contracts. So just like you trade other products, you know, I'm just showing you a one lot. Now, if I were trying to buy one at 52.75, it actually tells me if I bought one at 52.75, the most I could lose would be 52.75. It could go to zero. What's the most I can make? 47 and a quarter. It does the math for you based upon the price that you're willing to buy or willing to sell. Now, below, we also do some additional calculations. One, we give you the probability of right now uh, that it'll be in the money. If I'm buying one, you can see the midpoint is 51 and 5 eighths, 51.625, 51.63. The market is saying there's a 51.63% chance at this point in time, if you bought one, that it would go to 100. Now, if you were selling, it would not be that probability. It would be 100 minus that probability. We also do a, a, an ROI calculation. This is your max ROI. If I were to buy one um, here, it, it, it actually says, if you bought it, how much am I risking? What am I potentially making? We actually take 
your the cost of your transaction out of that and and we give you a, a max return on investment if your prediction or your uh, were, were, were to come true. Now, here's a sell ticket, all right, just uh, just as uh, to show you something different. Here's a contract, will it finish higher than 45.72? Uh, there's only an hour 39 left. And I can see the difference between, all right, if I'm selling one, yeah, well, if I sold one here, the most I can uh, lose is 41, I could potentially make 59. That's assuming I sell at 59 in between the bid ask spread. Notice that my IRA is, my ROI is greater than 100%, all right? Because I am risking 41 to potentially make 59. It's a nice return on my money. And if I'm selling it, well, right now they're telling me there's a greater than a 50% chance it's going to go to 100. If I'm selling it, my probability, in fact, there's 58 is is right in the middle. There's a The market saying there's a 58% chance it's going to go to 100 and only a 42% chance it'll go to zero. But again, you can make the determination on what you think is going to happen on your prediction on the markets. And that's how you can get into short duration binary options. Now, this is really important when trading binary options. It, and this, if I don't have your attention before, I hope I have it now. And this is important because I mentioned it when I went through the, the agenda at the beginning. Just because there's an expiration associated with the contract does not mean you have to wait until then to see what happens. You can choose to exit the position early if you like. Now, let's think about that. Why would I want to uh, exit a position early? Well, one, I would exit the position early because I want to lock in profits. The other reason I might want to exit the position early is to limit losses. So let's just kind of think about that example I had mentioned earlier. If you bought a binary option at 30, there's a 30% chance it's going to go to 100. There's a 70% a, a chance it's going to go to zero. But if you bought it at 30 and it actually went up a little bit and it went at the money, well, we know from earlier that the price of the binary option would probably go up to around 50. At that point, if there's an equal chance that it goes to 100 uh, or, or to zero, it's going to be a trading around 50. You could, you could sell the binary option back. You do not have to wait until expiration. So if you bought it at 30, looking to make 70, but it went up to even money and you decided, you know what? I bought it at 30, I'm gonna sell it at 50, I can lock in my $20 gain. Thank you very much, move on to your next trade. So you can buy it at 30, sell it back at 50, and then reassess. And depending upon what's going on, you might trade back and forth several times throughout the day or throughout the window. It all depends on what you're looking for and the amount of risk you're willing to take and the reward you want and your opinion on what's going on in the market. So you are not married to these. Once you put them on at some binary option providers, you are stuck with it and you have to wait and see what happens in the end. With Nadex, you can make your prediction around an event, around uh, whatever, on a binary option around a financial product and you have the ability to get in and out uh, as the markets move. Now, conversely, let's say I bought one at 50 because I was looking for it to go to 100 and it went down to 30. Maybe I reassess. Do I have to lose all 50 that I put in initially? The answer is no. I could choose to sell it back out at 30, take a $20 loss, say, oops, I was wrong, take my lumps, move on to the next trade. Um, you don't have to experience maximum loss. So you can get out of a position early for a partial profit or a partial loss if you want. In fact, closing a position early is kind of important. In fact, on binary options, we make it a little easy. So here's an example where I bought a, a, a binary option at 53 and a quarter. You can see that at the top of the order ticket. And once I bought it, I can say, you know what? I would sell it. If I bought it at 53 and a quarter, I could say I would be willing to sell it up at 82 and a quarter and take a $29 profit. And you'd be placing a limit order to sell it above the market. All right. So you can set a profit goal uh, where I don't necessarily get the entire maximum profit. But if I have to step away from my computer 
and I wanted to place a limit order where I would get out of a position early for a, a, a partial profit, I can certainly place that in there and walk away, come back, and if it traded, great, I locked in a profit, thank you. Um, conversely, if I was short one, I could place a bid lower to buy one for a profit to take it off for a partial profit. So we do offer a set profit target where you place a limit order. Now, other times where you make a mistake, all right, I bought one and I want to get out of it. I bought one at 53 and a quarter and I want to get out right now. I can I can simply close my position. There's a button that says close my position and it'll send a market order. And right now it's telling me, yeah, that well, you bought it at 53 and a quarter. The market order would there's so many 50 and a quarter bid, you would immediately lose three dollars. But if you make a mistake, you can simply get out. So we do offer set profit and we do offer close a position. Now, somebody's going to, I know that somebody's invariably going to ask, well, what about stop loss orders? And the stop loss is sort of inherently baked in to your position because you know when you get into it, you can't lose any more than what you initially put in. So um, although we are going, we're probably going to offer that functionality as we, uh, as we build out different types of order types. But right now, because everything is defined risk, you know you can't lose anymore. It's essentially your stop is the most that you risk on a trade and you choose contracts where you know what you're risking uh, before, you, before you get into trouble. Now, let's talk about how, um, let's talk about how price and time and the underlying market up impact the price of a binary option because volatility and time to expiration will impact how a binary option is priced. Well, we know it's the probability of the event occurring and we know that that probability is constantly going to change. Why is it going to change? Well, one, the price of the underlying is going to move around, right? And so that's going to change the probability of it being true or false. Uh, the other is time to expiration. So the more time there is, the more chance that it could either become true or become false. So you're going to see the price of those move around uh, based on how much volatility and how much time to expiration. Now, interestingly enough, the price of a binary option, the probability of it being true, does not have to move in line with the underlying product. The underlying product can move higher, but the price of the binary option might actually go lower because either there's no volatility or because it's very close to expiration, there's no time for it. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I do wanna walk through a couple of examples and you can look at these later uh, if you request the slide decks and then you play this recording back. But here's an example of, let's say there's a day to go and here's the Euro US dollar. And it's asking, will the Euro US dollar be greater than one spot 14 at 3 p.m.? And here's a chart of the euro us dollar throughout the day and there's our one spot 14 price level now in the end anything above that green line it's going to go to 100 and anything below that green line and it's going to go to zero so now let's look at how the price of the binary option moved throughout the day now early in the day it's already above the price so there's already it's already going to be above 50%. And if we look at the midpoint, it's a 56%. The market was saying there's a 56% chance that at the end of the day, it will go to 100. Now it does move lower and notice, yes, the price of the binary option dropped, but it wasn't a dramatic drop. It did drop down to 44%. Now, why did it only drop to 44%? And that's because there's still a lot of time left in the day. Now, as the day moves forward, notice it's about in the same spot, and it's the probability has dropped to 36%. Now, that's essentially decay. Why did the probability decay down to 36%? And it dropped and decayed down to 36% because now there's only half a day left. There's much less time for something to happen. Now, as we get closer to the end of the day, as it moves through that one spot 14, the probabilities will move much more dramatically. Notice when it pops back up, I mean, it jumped all the way up to 74%, and when it drops back down, it goes all the way down to 24%. Now, at this point in time, the market's saying there's a 24% chance that it's going to stay below the line and it's gonna to go to zero. 
but that also means there's a 76% chance that it will go above the line. Now with binary options, it doesn't matter how low below the line it goes, it's only gonna go to zero, and it doesn't matter how far above the line it goes, it can only go to 100. Limited risk, limited reward. So it's a way for people to get into the markets, and notice if you, you could have knocked this back and forth all day long with having defined risk, all day long. There's none of these surprises where all of a sudden in everything blew up. Oh my God, it went way, I, I, I lost everything because it went massively against me. Now your, your profits are also capped, but that defined risk reward environment allows uh, traders and particularly day traders to be able to get in there and be a little bit more active knowing that they're protected and knowing that they're not absolutely going to get blown out. Now at the end of the day, this one ended up going to 100. Remember, anywhere above that line, it goes to 100. Anywhere below that line, it goes to zero. Now, I'm not going to go through these examples in depth, but I am going to have them up there for you to review. Uh, this is an example where it stays below the line all day long. Now, when I said the price of the binary option doesn't have to move in line with the price of the underlying, here's an example where, look, the price of the underlying went up. It clearly went from 34. I mean, it, the price of the binary clearly went up. The underlying clearly went up, right? It went up, but the binary option went down. It went from 34% down to 20%. And why did it go down? Well, one, there's no volatility in the markets. You can see this is a very low volatility environment. And two, there's very little time left in the day. Now, could there, there's a 20% chance um, that it's, there's still a 20% chance it could go above, but there's an 80% chance it's going to stay below. And you can, again, depending upon what your opinion is on what's going on, there are different uh, ways to play binary options, but you can buy them, you can sell them, all defined risk, all defined reward. And this one, in this case, went to zero. Uh, here's an example where it, it stays above the line. And notice here, instead of decaying down to zero, Right, because it's above the line, and this gets sometimes it can be a little tricky. It actually decays up to a hundred. It decays all the way up to a hundred percent because it stays above. And that's really where you just gotta understand what that number represents. It's the probability that the event is going to be true. And if I buy it, I think it's going to be true. If I think it's going to be false, I can sell it. Now. Uh, with Nadex, this is something else that differentiates Nadex, particularly from a lot of other binary option providers, is not only do we give you a bunch of different products, um, commodities, equity indexes, uh, foreign exchange, events, we're going to have more prediction markets. Uh, we also give you different time frames and different conditions. So we've got contracts that are as short as five minutes. We've got five minute binary options in our foreign exchange markets. And I'll give you an example of that. You can see how the volatility of these move around dramatically. But we've got 20 minute contracts in the equity index markets. So if something's going on, if you know there's going to be a news announcement at 1030 and you think the equity indices are going to move, there might be some opportunity in the opportunities in those very short duration, 20 minute. We also have hourly, two hourly, daily, weekly. So we've got a bunch of different time frames. And in each time frame, there's going to be different strikes or conditions. Will it be above? So for instance, in gold, we'll have 1750, 1760, 1770, 1780, 1790, 18. You can pick which one you want. And if there's a lot of volatility, we'll add on the fly. So here's an example of just some of our foreign exchange markets where you can see every few hours there's a contract, there's a different time frame. So you can choose the time frame that suits you. And remember, different as you get closer and closer to expiration, that volatility is going to change. We went through some of those examples. So it gives you a, a, an ability to choose which time frame suits you. What are you comfortable with? In each time frame, there are different strike levels, different conditions. Will the Euro US dollar be greater than one spot 1304? Will it be greater than one spot 1280? And for each one of those, there's going to be different probabilities. And again, you can choose which contract, which time frame, and which strike price suits your trade. 
All right, and we've got charts where you can do your analysis and all of these are on the charts. And as I mentioned, we do have even have these short duration five minute binary options where a lot of people really love that action. And I'll give you an example of that shortly where you can see how quickly those prices move. And some people love that and some people would prefer not to have that much volatility. So they choose a slightly longer duration product. If you've got any questions, I know my colleague Adam has been in the background diligently typing away answers to questions. So I just want to give a shout out to Adam. Thank you for that. You can always email us, customerservice at nadex.com. Uh, that is also where you would email to request a copy of the slide decks. So please, if you'd like the slide decks, email customerservice at nadex.com. I will repeat that throughout the day. You can also follow us on social media. And the one on there I'd really like to emphasize is YouTube. And in fact, I am now going to jump over and do a little bit of off-roading for the next five to 10 minutes before our next presenter, which is going to be Mark Pietrino from, uh, from Benzinga. But before I jump over there, uh, let me change what I'm sharing. Okay, here we go. I think I could do this right here quickly. Oh, you know what? If you do not follow Nadex on YouTube, I would suggest you go to YouTube, look up Nadex, subscribe. We do have a lot of content. We will be putting the presentations here as well, eventually, but they'll also be on our website. Uh, but one thing I'd like to point out, if, I mean, you'll see all the videos and all the content that we produce every day. One thing, if you'd like some help looking at where are hot spots in the markets for today? Every morning we live stream. This is why I would say if you go to YouTube and subscribe, you can actually take a look at upcoming live streams. We do them every morning at 7.45 a.m. Central, 8.45 a.m. Eastern for about 15 or 20 minutes. I do this with uh, one of our, our partners, Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple. It's called Morning Market Movers. And we'll talk about the news that came out overnight We'll talk about what economic events or uh, what type of news might be moving the markets in which products today. We jump into the charts and we do some technical analysis and look at some interesting levels. Again, no trade recommendations, but if you need help or want some ideas on where you might want to focus today on potential hotspots, you can join. If you can't join live and you miss it, uh, we the, the recordings are immediately available. So if you're interested in to see, hear what we spoke about this morning, you're more than free to go back and play what we did this morning. Or if you wanted to hear how we did the, you know, yesterday or even on Friday. Friday was an interesting day, um, as was yesterday. We had some pretty volatile markets. But if you're curious, we do offer this up. Morning Market Movers, they are live streamed on YouTube every morning. You'll catch those on Nadex YouTube. You know what I need to do is I want to jump over to the platform. There we go. This is what I was looking for. Here we go, the Nadex platform. Now, uh, right now, I'm just going to do a little bit on binary options. Later today, I will talk more about knockouts and call spreads. All right, we are going to be doing that in the second half of the day. Uh, in binary options, you can see that we've got all these equity indices. Uh, here's the s and uh, here's the uh, s and p 500. We can see what the S&P 500 looks like, and, and you can see all the different strike prices that we have. Uh, this is, these expire in 15 minutes, so uh, it's going to be, uh, and as you can see, we've got daily ones, weekly ones, and we'll be putting out more hourly ones as the day goes on. We've also got, and you can see, uh, this is only in test right now in the demo environment, but we do have, uh, you know, if you wanted to play around with cryptocurrencies, if you're rather interested, we've got some, we're demoing these right now. They, we do not have those in production yet. Uh, and then you can see, we've got a variety of event contracts. Uh, number of vaccinated Americans is actually one that we're kind of playing with right now, but we've got a lot of different economic events where markets can move. Uh, foreign exchange markets and commodities markets. I mean, the oil market has been absolutely gangbusters lately. Uh, oil has been moving around quite a bit and these short duration binary options. In fact, here, I'm just going to drop this down to a 15 minute chart. And I mean, you could see how, there's a, there's plenty of binary options in here and how there, and again, all these are going to go to either a zero or a hundred. What I did want to walk you through, because I think it's kind of, it really drives home the point is I would like to walk through 
a five minute binary option contract. Let's just grab the Euro US dollar real quickly. And I'm gonna drop this down to one minute. So we, cause we're on a five minute and I do wanna show all the strikes. All right, now we can see that there are only four minutes and 15 seconds for this contract. I am going to zoom in a little bit here and make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. And let's watch what the, how the price of the binary options move. Now there's four minutes left right now. The market is not giving me a high probability of it finishing here. And notice how this is currently above 60%. Now we might be in a little bit of a dead zone here where there might not be a lot of volatility. If we look back, if the price of the Euro US dollar were to move, here it goes, it's moving down. Notice how quickly the price of this dropped down to, it dropped below 50 and just popped back up above 50. It's going to move quickly. Now, it can. I don't know if we're just going to be in a five-minute window here where there's where it's not going to move much. Uh, but if I thought this were going to pop up, I mean, I could potentially buy one of these and risk seven and. Let's let's just try to buy one. I bought. I think I just I just bought one. Um, let's just take a look at my position. I bought one at seven seventy-five. If this were to pop higher now. Do I have to, I mean, I might just say, you know what, I'm willing to take a flyer and let it go to 100. But if I don't, and I would, you know, maybe I'll just take, if it were to pop up quickly, maybe I'd sell it at 42 and take a quick $34 profit. I could place a limit order up above at 42. Now, I don't know if this is going to pop higher. We're going to see what happens here. We still have, um, we still have two and a half minutes to go. And we are, we're kind of, it's, it's just, here we go with one minute candles. It's really not moving much at all. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Notice how the one here that was at the money that did drop down below 50 very briefly is now quickly decaying up to 100. Because again, there's not much volatility and it's ticking a little bit higher. Now, if this were to drop suddenly, you'll watch this and this will... This could potentially drop below. I mean, this, in the end, all of these are either going to go to zero or 100. Uh, I, and, you know, I just happened to pick a window here. There were, where the, look at this. We've got th three or four candles where nothing is happening. Um, usually when I do this, uh, something would, would happen. I mean, you can see how in different points in time, how it would move through multiple strikes and the volatility <laughs> would be a little bit more dramatic. Uh, we're not seeing that now. We've only got a minute and a half to go. Um, I'm going to wait with this for just a few more moments and then uh, we'll take a break before we bring on Mark Petrino around technical analysis because I do kind of want to see where this is going to finish. And it's still hovering and hanging in there above 50%. Uh, well, I think you kind of get the point. In the end, it looks like the one I bought is going to probably go to zero. If I wanted to get out of it, I could, you know, just dump it. Um, or at this point, since I only risk seven dollars and twenty-five cents, uh, I'll just take my seven dollar and twenty-five cent loss because uh, it does not appear that uh, I'm going to get lucky enough to see this pop through. But this is still this one's still been dancing around because we don't know if it's going to finish above or below the line. And if it's above, it does stay above, it goes to 100. And if it goes below, it will go to zero. Now, the reasons a lot of people get out of these in the last few seconds is what you're going to see is as we get into the last half a second, I mean, half, half a minute, the prices are going to disappear a little bit. And the reason the prices disappear is no one's willing to take the risk in the very end of the contract because we don't know what's going to happen. Um, and in the end, this is either going to go to, a, each one of these are going to go to 100 or zero. And with 10 seconds to go, it looks like this is going to go to zero. This is going to go to 100. We just got new contracts that came in there and we're done. It expired. The one went to 100, the other one went to zero. And we've got a new, we get a new five minute window. So here we go. And, and we do it all over again and you've got new strikes and you've got new probabilities and you could trade the new probabilities for the next five minute time frame.